Amen. Brother Ernie, thank you. Thank you very much for those uh, encouraging songs. Not sure when you put those together, but brother, you almost took my voice too. Uh, and my wind, so. Uh, but we do appreciate the song service that you've given us. And brothers and sisters, good to see you. It's good to uh, be out to worship God this morning in a spirit and in truth. And I'm asking you one thing at this point. If you had issues, had challenges, even had some great points in your week, we want to thank God for those. But leave them there. We want to focus in on our worship uh, to God this morning. I've already instructed my timekeeper, Dylan, to start the clock at 25 minutes. 25 minutes. Now, I gave him the time clock because I can discipline him, so I don't have to listen. I just keep going. But no, in, in all sincerity, we want to make sure that we deliver a message that's timely, but also that is uh, applicable to our, to our lives. And so, just for a few minutes this morning, we want to talk about the armor of God. We want to talk about the armor of God. We want to thank Brother Lewis a senior last week talking about the Church of Christ and the identity yeah. of the Church of Christ. I think it's important we know who we are right. and understand who we are yeah. and understand what that's all about. Yeah. Then we want to thank Brother Sadiq last week gave us a message. He gave us a couple of messages, but he gave us a message. And in that message, he talked about three important points. Yeah. Misunderstanding the scripture. Yeah. Misinformation from the scripture, and then misapplication to the scriptures. So Brother Sadiq, we want to thank you uh, for your message and what you have uh, brought to us. This morning, talking about the armor of God, we want to take a familiar scripture text from Ephesians chapter 6, Brother Dale. And we want to see what we can do to make this real for us in our daily walk. And hopefully if you guys are okay with this, as we talk about making it real, I'm gonna actually kind of share with you in my life kind of what I do to help make a, some points as we go through this message. So I found this story I'm gonna share with you. It says, somehow there was a young man who found himself standing directly in the middle of traffic, and there was an oncoming car. The driver hit her brakes. Before either of them could do anything, it seemed like this 10-year-old was shoulder deep in the windshield of her car. She says, are you all right? Asked the driver. From inside the football helmet, a young squeaky voice responded, I think so. The boy, a participant in Pop Warner football, was on his way home from practice, and he was still in full uniform. The driver saw the boy too late, and the boy saw the car coming too late. Let me tell you something. From this story, it's important to recognize that we always must have our personal protective equipment with us at all times. We must have our protective equipment at all times. Because let me share something with you that I know you already know. But the devil is out there on the highway of life trying to plow down Christians. Trying to run us over as we are on the king's highway. So we're talking about personal protective equipment. And in various lines of work, it could be various things. I was talking to Brother Vidal, and Brother Vidal is a mechanic, and he works on a lot of machinery. They call him in when something goes down, if there's a problem. Brother Vidal told me, you know, Brother Johnny, I wear a hard hat to protect my head. I wear safety glasses or goggles to protect my eyes. I put in hearing protection, little earbuds, to ensure that I don't get any hearing loss. I wear protective sleeves because as we're getting the equipment, it's hot. It can burn you on. And he said, Brother Johnny, I also wear a pair of boots because you never know, something can fall. I got some steel toe boots in order to protect my feet. Brother Mike Harris has folks that go out with AT&T and they help install uh, their internet and do various things. And talk to Brother Mike, he says, yeah, Johnny, my people, they have protective equipment. Yeah. Well, you know what? As Christians, we have personal protective equipment that is detrimental to our spiritual survival. 
is detrimental to our spiritual daily walk and is detrimental to our existence as a Christian. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 20, we see that Paul was in chains and constantly under guard by Roman soldiers as he wrote this letter to the Ephesians. As Paul stated, uh, as Paul talked about standing firm against the wiles and the schemes of the devil, I can only imagine that Paul being locked up with the Roman guard there had this as a perfect illustration in talking about the equipment that we need out here on the spiritual island. Yeah, yeah. So the first thing that we want to look at when we talk about our spiritual protective equipment, the scriptures say there in Ephesians chapter six, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Uh -huh. Let me share something with you. Y'all hold on, don't go anywhere. I got some props today. <laughs> <laughs> you guys see this here? Yeah. All right. As a law enforcement officer, I have a duty belt. All right. Okay? And this duty belt is not only there to make sure that my pants stay up, yeah. right? But this duty belt here allows me, Brother Ernie, to get some tools if I need the tools. I actually, yes sir, that's correct. There's certain tools that uh, we have here. My duty belt holds extra rounds of fire just in case I ever get into a situation that I feel I need to fire my weapon. This duty belt carries my pepper spray. And I'm gonna tell you all this, if you haven't been pepper sprayed, you don't want to get pepper sprayed. I was pepper sprayed about a year and a half ago in a situation, and I'm saying, we're supposed to pepper spray here, you got me. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't feel too good. All right, on my duty belt, I have a baton. That just helps people act right. Yeah. And then on my duty belt, I have handcuffs just in case we need to take someone to jail. We all, as Christians, we need to ensure that we have our belt on. Yeah. So Paul was talking about the Roman soldier. And during battle, the uniform could be easily a hindrance uh, or get in the way as they're in battle if they did not have on their belt. The uniform is tucked into, um, into their pants and the belt is there to hold up all the other pieces of armor. The belt was an essential piece of equipment. Spiritually, we have our belt of truth wrapped around our waist. John chapter 17 and verse number 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth Thy word is what? True. Thy word yes. is true. Yes. The first piece of spiritual armor or defense that we have spiritually is to have good knowledge of the truth. Yes. We have to know the Bible. Yes. We very uh, familiar scripture text with us all. Second Timothy chapter two and verse number fifteen says, "Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman at what yes. needed not." Be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Yeah. You guys, if we're going to be on the spiritual walk, we got to know what we're on this walk for. Yeah. We got to know the truth, Brother Richard. How is it that we know the truth? You got to study it. You got to study it. Brother Richard sells cars. Do you think they just put a new car in front of him? He's going to go and try to sell it without reading something about the car? No, he doesn't. He reads the specs. And he looks at how a family of five could fit into a Toyota Camry, or do they need to jump up to the Highlander? He understands that. What if Brother Richard had people coming to talk to him about selling cars, and about buying a car, and he knew nothing about it? Well, it has a key, and you put gas in it. Well, tell me something else about it. He has to understand that for us as Christians, we need to understand what it is that we talk about. So not only do we have the belt of truth, but we also have a breastplate of righteousness. All right, so let me show you, let me get another prop. This here is uh, one of my ballistic weapons, or it's a bulletproof vest. Right. You guys know about bulletproof vests. I thank God for bulletproof vest. So this is one that we wear on the outside of our uniform, okay? This is actually, it's pretty doggone heavy, so I'm gonna put it down here in a second. But we actually have this 
to protect not only against firearm from a direction we don't know it's coming from, but also protects against rifles. I have another bulletproof vest that I wear underneath my uniform. Okay, and that one can protect from some guns. This one from rifles. The rifle will go right through a regular vest. Not only, not only will it protect from that, but it can protect me or the other deputies or officers from maybe a knife attack. From a knife attack. Look at this. So this past Monday evening, we know Tuesday was 4th of July. Monday evening, the city of La Puente, Brother Ernie, had a firework celebration. I saw uh, Blake and Brianna uh, out there. And you guys, they had 32,000 people out here at La Puente Park. 32,000 people was the number. And we weren't worried. We had Homeland Security, the FBI, everybody there. But we weren't worried necessarily about you know, someone trying to take a gun and shooting us. We were more worried about the knife attack, okay? Because you're in such close proximity to people. We still need to be able to protect ourselves. And you guys, you know what? I was scared pretty much most of that night because if you guys remember, we had a nice little heat wave this week. And these bulletproof vests, you put them on, are very, very hot, Brother Baker. So, you know, it was 100 degrees when we started. I said, I don't need my bulletproof vest today. So we're at briefing and a lieutenant says, hey, Stevenson, how you? touches my back. You guys, you know what? I, because it was hot, I didn't wear my bulletproof vest. I didn't have my protection. I didn't have my protection on. Okay? For us, we need to know as Christians, we always, always. have to have your breastplate of righteousness on. So in the, in the Roman times, the breastplate was an important piece of armor because it protected the heart and the lungs of the Roman soldier. The heart and the lungs for anyone are the vital parts of life. Okay, if a soldier was wounded there, most likely he was going to die. The Roman breastplate was made of strong leather covered with metal. No arrow or dart could pierce a breastplate that was worn. In verse 14 of our text, it says, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in its place. The breastplate of righteousness for the Christian is just that. It is all about being righteous. Well, Brother John, what does righteous mean? It means being right in the sight of the Lord. Yeah. The Christian soldier needs to make sure that they are right in the sight of the Lord. And Jesus helps give us what we need when it comes to righteousness. Yeah. The righteousness of Jesus is the only way that the Christian can have victory. Yeah. We can't rely on our own righteousness or the righteousness of others. Yeah. I have some great people in my family, both immediate and extended. Sometimes I reach out for advice, but they can't give me every piece of advice that I need. We need to make sure that we always rely on the Lord. Isaiah 64 and verse number 6 says, Above uh, all of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are as filthy rags. We all shriveled up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. Sometimes we try to rely on our own thoughts. We try to rely on our own concepts and our own theories. But they're nothing in comparison to what the Word of God has for us. Yeah. So then, Brother Johnny, how do we put on the breastplate of righteousness? I'm glad you asked. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds we have been healed. Yeah. So the question then remains and needs to be asked, how do we die to our sins for righteousness sake? Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 7 says, Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been free from sin. <laughs> Romans chapter 6 and verse 18, I love this scripture. 
because it gives us the promise um, after we have been baptized by the faith of Jesus Christ. And it says in Romans chapter 6, 18, you have been set free from sin and, because, and become slaves to righteousness. We should thank God that we are no longer slaves to sin. However, we still should be cautious because there are some sins that easily entangle us or beset us. After we sin, our breastplate gets weakened. Jesus Christ can repair our breastplate. So I showed you the bulletproof vest. If you are involved in a shooting and you hope you're not in a line of, line of work and you get shot in your bulletproof vest, then one of the things that they do is they take that vest away from you, get you a new one because this one has been compromised. Well, guess what? When we sin, our breastplate spiritually has been weakened and Jesus Christ is the only one that can repair our breastplate. First John chapter one and verse nine. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Without Jesus Christ's wall and his breastplate, we are going to be injured and we will not be able to recover. We will die eternally without Christ. It's important that we have the breastplate of righteousness. Next thing we want to look at is the boot, okay? They're durable, they're comfortable under most situations, yeah, and they provide protection. Hold on one second. I actually have a new pair of boots. I don't wear these out in the street. I just wear these when they say there's gonna be an inspection. And I'm like, uh-oh, because I know my duty boots, they're not ready to be inspected. But when we have an inspection, I kind of blow these off. If we have a little equip piece of equipment in our station, you hit a button and it will actually kind of shine your boot for you real quick. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 15 says, And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Yeah. Paul, again writing to uh, the church in Ephesus, again had that Roman guard there with him. Paul had in mind here that the Roman soldiers wore boots in order to protect them while they were on duty. It was a boot that was heavily nailed, studded sole, which tied to the ankles and to the shins and to the straps. These were not shoes for running, so they could not pick up these boots and get ready to run. These boots served for marching, especially in battle. Their function was almost like today's football cleats. Okay, when they wear football cleats, they're studded so that they can get a good grip in the ground. Now, Brother Ernie, you wore football cleats. I never, I never was man enough to play football, but in those cleats, they would actually get into the ground and give you good traction. Thank you, sir. You still can't get that video game, but thank you. I, <laughs> I had to say that because he's going to bring it up later. They gave the foot traction and prevented it from sliding. Much ancient battles looked different than today, but they were actually hand-to-hand -hand and foot-to-foot -foot battle. It was almost like a football player on the line of scrimmage. So these boots gave the Roman soldier an advantage. The readiness that it talks about in this verse pictures us being ready with our boots firmly planted on the ground. What is being firmly planted on the ground? Being firmly planted on the ground means being firmly planted and rooted in the Word of God. Okay? Thus it established the enemy is not going to be able to push us back. We must not go where the Lord doesn't want us to go. These boots that they wore for the Roman soldiers, they did not easily, they made it hard for the soldier to retreat. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 22, it says, flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. It can be done, but it's difficult. Try not to get in situations where we know we will not have peace. We will all be tempted to fall. So you guys, you know what? There are gonna be some situations that are just bad for us to be in, Sister Ronji. And you know what? We just need to make sure that we're not in those situations. And if we're holding on to the truth, 
it's going to be much easier for, easier for us to avoid those. Now, are we still going to find ourselves in some situations? Yes, we definitely will. All right, but at least you'll have a firm place yeah. in which to put your feet on to be able to make a stand. As we mature in Christ, we should be able to advance and overcome our fears. John chapter 14, verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. <laughs> the next piece that we want to talk about in our spiritual armory is the shield of faith. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 16 says, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. In those days, there were common, uh, there were no cannons or bombs that fell from the sky. Uh, on a few, there were a few long range missiles, uh, weapons, excuse me. Um, those were arrows. So what they would do is they would stand back from a distance and shoot an arrow. And that is when a shield would become important because as the arrows were falling, you had to put something up in order to protect the soldiers, okay? The Romans protected themselves from these long range attacks with shields that each soldier carried with them. They would kneel down and cover themselves with shields. And one of the important pieces that I found and I think is very important that uh, feel could be applicable for us today is that when there was a whole band of soldiers that shot arrows at the enemy, what they did on the other side is they actually banded themselves together to make one big shield. Our point of application is this. Sometimes we face these issues and challenges like Brother Sadiq mentioned in his prayer. And we sometimes think we have enough strength, Sister Dennis, to put up with these things on our own. But we need to make sure that we bring it, number one, to the Lord in prayer. And then as well, let's talk to our brothers and sisters about it. I tell you, it's much more powerful to have us all pray, have us all on one page praying for something than just you doing it by yourself. Than just you doing it by yourself. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number one, talks about faith and what faith is. It says, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of the things that we do not see. For us, our shield is the shield of faith. And we as Christians, we need to make sure that we hold up our shield, our shield of faith. There are a lot of good examples of having faith all throughout the Word of God. Reminds me in 2 Kings chapter 6, there was King Aram, and what he was trying to do is he was trying to attack Israel. And it seemed like every time he would try to make a strategic move to attack Israel, it, um, there was Daniel there who knew exactly what the Lord wanted him to share with the king of Israel. So every time King Aram would, uh, the king of Aram would make a move, the Lord's servants were already in place. It says here, when the servant of man, uh, when the servant of the man of God got up and went out early in the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. And he says, oh my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. He says, don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Right. And Elijah prayed, O oh Lord, and he opened up his eyes so he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked, and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Yeah. Yeah. Important point for us to know is sometimes we may not see a way out. Uh -huh. Sometimes we may not say, how am I going to get out of this situation? Let's pray to God. Because he has more on his side than what others have on their side. The helmet of salvation. Next piece we want to look at. The helmet of salvation. Hold on. We are given these helmets if there's a riot or if there's some type of 
uh, disturbance in the area. Now you may say, Brother Johnny, yours is new and shiny. Thank God. <laughs> we want to thank God for the Richard Mine is new and shiny. I only had to put it on once, and that was just to try it on, make sure it fit my big noggin. <laughs> it's new and shiny, I know. I don't, what is it? it has a county seal on it. See, I haven't even pulled this thing out too often. Okay? We are given this shield in order to protect ourselves if there is a domestic disturbance or if there's an issue of a riot or something of that nature. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Our Christian toolbox needs a helmet to protect our head. One good hit on the head from Satan can have you out of the game. Rest assured of your salvation, Ephesians 6, 17, and take the helmet of salvation. Satan can't take away your salvation. The thing is, you can choose to give it up, but he can't take it away from you. The Roman soldier's helmet was made of bronze, often with two hinged cheek pieces fastened about the chin to keep it attached and keep it tight. It protected his head, which in theory protects their brain. Okay? The breastplate protected the lungs and the heart. The helmet protected the brain. But without the brain, soldier is useless. Without our brain, the soldier, we being Christian soldiers, we're useless. We gotta protect our head. Okay? On marches, the helmet was not worn, but when they put the when they put the helmet on, you can best believe that the fight was going to be on. Without an insurance of salvation, the Christian soldier is useless. If a soldier is unsure of what happens if uh, he were to die, he will not fight effectively. Even if we are all killed in battle, we have a great reward, and that is eternal, our eternal life in heaven. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13. It says, those who, those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. James 1 and verse 12 says, Blessed is the one who pers uh, perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen. You guys, I, I am so thankful to be a part of the Church of Christ. Whether that was here or in Bakersfield when I moved away or helping out the Tashby congregation. I love being a member of the Church of Christ. I love coming and worshiping and talking to the Greens and talking to Brother Marvin and just whomever we talk to. It's great fellowship. You know, we've had some great fellowship over the years with many members that uh, have been here. But you know what? I don't necessarily know if if I wasn't going to go to heaven or try to get to heaven, I, why would we come? There'd be no point. I got to be honest, during football season, I'm not even a football person, but I'd be at home watching football, brother. <laughs> why not? But it's because I believe and I know and I am assured that there's a crown of life for me yeah. waiting there for me. Okay, if I live, and for us, if we live the life that Christ would have us to live. Yeah. Yeah. Last thing I want to talk about from these verses is the sword of the spirit which is the, which is the word of God alright one of the last pieces that I'll show today is not the full arsenal of the sheriff so just in case you're trying to tap us uh, there's, there's other things I'm not going to share Brother Stevenson said don't show everything so I'm not going to show everything but one of the pieces that we use is a baton or a PR-24 Hold on a second. <laughs> I actually carry two. Hard hits. <laughs> I actually carry two. This first one is an old school PR 24. And we have to carry this with us everywhere we go. <clears throat> okay, this is used for if I have to put on a ride helmet. And if there's a civil disturbance, we actually have to use these in formation. I sure hope we don't because I haven't used one in about 10 years. <laughs> so y'all pray for me if that happens. Okay? 
So this is a PR24. And then the one that I commonly carry is what's known as an expandable baton. And it pops out just like that. And then we go to work. <laughs> Honestly, I don't want to use it. Really, really don't. Okay? Really, really don't want to use this piece. A lot of people think, oh, you just do this to break someone's bones or whatever. You could actually use them for different things to gain compliance or uh, in a big crowd situation, you actually kind of use it just to push people back. Or the most, most of the time I actually use mine is if there's a dog coming. And I don't wanna, unfortunately, I don't want to shoot the dog. Okay. So that has had more hits from a, hitting a dog than anything else. But we use that. It's made out of metal. Some are made out of wood. Some are out of plastic. It's either used for defense or offense. Well, spiritually, we have a sword. We have a baton. And that is the word of God. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17 says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. <clears throat> the sword for the Roman soldier varied in length from 6 to 18 inches. It was a common sword carried by the Roman foot soldiers and was the main weapon that they used in hand-to-hand -hand, uh, combat. They carried it in a carrier, which was on their side, and it was always at hand and ready to be used. The soldier made sure that his sword was sharp and ready to use. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, talks about the word being like the sword. It says, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged or two-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Romans chapter 15 and verse number four says, everything, everything written and the scripture was written to teach us in order that we might have hope through patience and encouragement which the scriptures give us. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8 says, Yes, grass, grass withers and flowers fade, but the word of our God endures forever. Amen. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24 says, So then, anyone who hears these words of mine and obeys them is like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. We're talking this morning about our spiritual armory. And you all, I think it's so, so important. We've been having the theme of the kingdom, the power, the glory, talking about the church of Christ. And I am so glad that we've been talking about that. But I think it's important that we recognize that we are in a spiritual battle system. Yeah. Yeah. We're in a spiritual battle every day. Yeah. And if I could just call a spade a spade, some of us are dealing with some spiritual battles even right now in this worship service. Okay, some things that we always are going to be dealing with. We're recognizing the power and talking about the church. We have to need to recognize that we got some power too. Yeah. We need to thank God and that power comes from God Amen. Almighty. The last point I want to make this morning is that we need to make sure that as we are fighting this spiritual war, right. that we stay focused on the fight. Yeah. We stay focused on the fight. Yeah. There are going to be a lot of things, Sister Baker, that distract us. There are going to be a lot of things, Brother Mejia, that come in our way and may seem as if um, it is more important than what the battle is that we're fighting now. So, I want you guys to help me out on this last piece. Everyone please who's awake still. <laughs> I want everyone please just focus on this white piece of paper. Yeah. Please just focus on this white piece of paper. Michelle? Uh-oh, people looked. <laughs> just focus up here on this, white, on this white piece of paper. Okay? Sister Michelle just stood, 12 eyes just went away. Mm -hmm. Sister Denisha is standing right now. People just looked. Just saw a few other eyes, but thank you guys, appreciate it. 
Sometimes there are some things that so easily distract us. I gave us one thing to do, and that's look here at this white piece of paper. But just as these brothers and sisters stood with holding up a different piece of paper, some eyes went that way, and you lost focus on the battle. So next thing you know, you lose focus on the battle, and you try to refocus again on that battle, and your enemy is in your face. It's too late at that point. It's too late at that point. We gotta make sure that we always focus in on the battle. But Brother Johnny, there's some things that are gonna distract us. Boy, don't I know. Boy, don't I know. But the more that we are in tune with God's word, the more that we are fellowshipping with our brothers and sisters, the more that we come here to be spiritually fed, then the less that those distractions or that those distractors become for us on our spiritual walk. There's a war going on, you guys. Ephesians 6, 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. We must equip ourselves for this war, or our fight will be over before we know it. Our enemy, the devil, let's not make any mistake about it, it's the devil who is our enemy. Now the devil may come looking differently than he did last week, but it's still the devil. Our enemy, the devil, will try to overtake us and we will be left devastated, not knowing even what hit us. Ephesians 6 tells us what we need in order to be prepared for this war. We need our belt of truth breastplate of righteousness, our feet shod or fitted, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. Yeah. This morning we've been talking primarily to members of the body, talking about the spiritual war that we are in and the tools that we need to help us through the spiritual war. If we fall, as a soldier, we have our general, Jesus Christ, who is there to pick us up. Yeah. He's there to pick us up. He makes himself available. He has an open door policy, Brother Ernie. Yeah. His door is always open. Yeah. It's up to us, though, to enter and to come in. That's right. okay. we, we need to reach our hand out to the Lord. Ask God to forgive us. And you know what? We all sin. We all come short. Okay? It's all about what do you do next. you got to get it right with the Lord. And for those that are not part of the body, guess what? You actually don't even have these tools yet. Unfortunately, you're fighting this war alone with no protection. And I'm gonna tell you this, I'd say that you're probably gonna lose the war. Okay, if you don't have any protection. How is it then, Brother Johnny, that I get these pieces of armor to help protect me? First thing that we must do is we must hear the gospel and recognize our condition, Romans chapter 10 and verse 10. Then we must have faith to believe in the word of God, Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Next, we must repent of our sins. Ask God to forgive us and that he will. And then we must confess that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God, Acts chapter 8 and verse 37. Then the next step is we must go down to the watery grave of baptism yeah. for the remission of our sins. That's 2 and verse 38. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Then there's the next step that we're all in. And we must walk in the newness of life. Right. We're all in. Just to let you know we're all in that step. We're all trying to walk in the newness yeah. of life. Amen. Whatever is on your heart, even if you want to ask for prayer, one of the great things is... You're not in this war alone. You have brothers and sisters who are your soldier mates. And we're here trying to fight together. Ask us to help pray with you and for you. That's what we're here to do. Yeah. So whatever your charge may be, we're going to ask that we stand. Brother Ernie will then come give us our invitation on him. Let's all stand. Amen.